The Dead Sea is on the one hand not a sea, and on the other hand not quite as dead as its name suggests. And yet, some devastating developments are currently leading to the fact that the Dead Sea is actually dying. But what is the background of these dramatic events? What really leads to the drying up of the water body? Can the fate of the Dead Sea still be averted? Sit back, press the like and subscribe buttons, and find out together with us. The Sea That Is Not Located in a depression of the Jordan Rift Valley, the Dead Sea borders Israel, Jordan, and the West Bank. As already mentioned at the beginning, we are not dealing with a sea in the classical sense, but with a lake of 800 square kilometers, which is known for its extreme salt content. In detail, this amounts to up to 33% and is thus almost 10 times higher than that of the Mediterranean Sea. Interesting to know, however, this by no means advances the Dead Sea to the saltiest body of water on Earth. In fact, it is trumped by several other lakes, including Lac Retba in Senegal and Tuz Gulu in Turkey. But in another category, no one body of water comes close to the Dead Sea. At 430 meters below sea level, it advances to become the deepest lake on Earth. But what is the meaning of the word dead in its name? Historical sources indicate that this term was even in circulation in ancient times. Well, in detail, the term is closely linked to the idea that the body of water that has such high salt content cannot harbor life. And even if at first glance it seems that the Dead Sea does not count any natural inhabitants, this is a fallacy. However, we are not dealing with fish and company here, but with tiny microorganisms that successfully manage to defy the extreme conditions of their environment. In fact, some microorganisms that have been detected in the Dead Sea were previously completely unknown. Because the abundance of salt changes the density of the water so that anything floating in the water becomes relatively lighter, it is said that it would be virtually impossible to drown in the Dead Sea. And although the water carries the bodies of bathers exceptionally well, this is not quite true. For in fact, bathing accidents in which people almost drown are not uncommon there. It happens, for example, that people who are floating, relaxed on the water, suddenly lose their balance and subsequently swallow large amounts of water. Such a scenario can quickly turn into a fight to the death, as the enormous salt content can cause severe lung injuries. Salty Tourist Magnet On the other hand, Dead Sea Salt also holds some pleasant benefits for the human body. For example, people suffering from chronic skin diseases in particular swear by a bath in the world-famous lake. Therefore, in normal years, well over 3 million visitors flock to the region to enjoy the beneficial properties of the salty water. However, it is not even necessary to travel to the Middle East for this purpose. For example, Dead Sea bath salts have long been available in pharmacies and drugstores. But be that as it may, the popular photo motifs showing bathers floating happily on the Dead Sea and leafing through a newspaper will probably soon be a thing of the past. Experts estimate that it won't be 30 years before the Dead Sea dries up completely, leaving nothing but an ecological, social, and economic desert. But why is that? Why is the world-renowned natural wonder dying, and can it be saved? The Dead Sea is Dying Basically, the Dead Sea is fed by the Jordan River. Well, at least in theory, because in practice, the supply has been drying up more and more for several decades. Thus, the main reason for the drying up of the Dead Sea is the massive water withdrawal from the Jordan River. In order to ensure the supply of drinking water and the irrigation of agriculture, Israel, Syria, and Jordan tap about 95% of the Jordan River water before it reaches the Dead Sea. To put this in perspective, in the 1930s, about 1,300 million cubic meters of water arrived in the Dead Sea each year. Currently, it is about 310 million cubic meters. While the level in the 90s still decreased by an average of 1 meter per year, this mark should even be broken frequently in the following years. Since more water evaporates than is supplied, the surface of the lake has shrunk by a third within three decades. It is in the nature of things that this development is associated with some drastic consequences. After the water has receded, the salt remains in the ground. The retreating groundwater in turn dissolves the salt, making the ground porous and practically collapsing. 
In this way, enormous craters are formed, the so-called sinkholes. These furrows have diameters of up to 30 meters and transform their surroundings into a surreal lunar landscape. On the Israeli side alone, 6,000 of these gaping ground scars already exist. Several plantations, stores, campsites, and roads have already had to retreat from this development. But also the industry contributes its sad part to the fact that the Dead Sea disappears visibly. For example, the body of water contains some valuable minerals that are highly sought after in fertilizer production and other sectors. In order to appropriate the resources, Jordan and Israel have converted southern parts of the Dead Sea into a network of man-made evaporation ponds. Solutions and Risks But how can the complete desiccation of the Dead Sea be prevented? Well, there are basically two possible solutions. On the one hand, it would be advisable to curb the water withdrawal from the Jordan River and to channel fresh water into the Dead Sea. On the other hand, those responsible are toying with the idea of building a huge pipeline that would run from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. This project is closely interwoven with a seawater desalination plant near the Jordanian city of Akba. The basic idea is that after drinking water has been produced, the highly saline liquid left behind will be piped into the Dead Sea. What sounds quite plausible at first glance, however, is viewed extremely critically by environmentalists. There is a suspicion that the brine from the Red Sea, which ultimately arrives in the Dead Sea, has a different chemical composition than the drying lake. Or in other words, what sounds like an ambitious rescue attempt on paper could deal the final death blow to the Dead Sea ecosystem. Regardless of all the shrill alarm bells accompanying the relevant plans, the idea of building a canal between the Red Sea and the Dead Sea is not a new one. Indeed, the roots of this idea go back to the late 19th century. In fact, a study conducted with the help of the World Bank recently painted a very positive picture. According to the study, the project could be implemented without hesitation, both ecologically and economically, as well as socially. Under a multi-stage plan, 235 million cubic meters of brine and seawater would initially enter the Dead Sea, followed by an inflow of 700 million cubic meters. But as already briefly alluded to, this plan would also amount to an uncertain shot in the dark. If the sulfate-containing Red Sea water is mixed with the calcium-containing Dead Sea water, turbidity of the water could occur. Uncertain Future However, the construction of a pipeline is accompanied by another risk. For example, there is concern that the pipeline could be damaged by earthquakes or, in some places, destroyed. If the extremely salty liquid were to spill into the groundwater, it would become saline. Against this background, would it not be more advisable to focus on reducing water withdrawal from the Jordan River? Alternatively, it is also proposed to replenish the Dead Sea with water from the Mediterranean Sea. However, these two concepts are not currently being seriously discussed at the negotiating tables of the responsible parties. For, in fact, the factor of obtaining drinking water through seawater desalination is anything but insignificant. For example, many groundwater reservoirs in Jordan are already as good as exhausted. Currently, the country's inhabitants have to manage with less than 1% of the world's average water supply. The tense political situation between Israel and Jordan should not be ignored either. As if the water crisis were not profound enough, there have been repeated diplomatic conflicts between the two countries in the recent past. In the meantime, there is even concern that Israel is no longer interested in building the canal. The situation in Jordan, however, is somewhat different. Preparations for the construction of the seawater desalination plant are said to have reached a final stage. If everything goes according to plan, it could be put into operation as early as 2025. However, the future of the Dead Sea currently looks bleak. Modassam Saidan, Jordan's Minister of Water and Irrigation, said that attempts to save the lake appear to be coming to nothing, and that the hope of saving the Dead Sea is visibly fading. So guys, now we are curious about your opinion. What do you think about the dramatic development that the Dead Sea has been going through for quite some time? In your opinion, can this natural wonder be saved? Write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback down in the comments. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a subscription to stay up to date from now on. 
Finally, feel free to take a look at the other exciting posts on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images here in the credits now. And with that, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.